Phil, how are you? Hey, Catherine, doing well. How are you uh, hanging in there? So good. We're doing, we're doing really good. I am so excited to introduce today Phil Harrop. And Phil Harrop is the administrator for Mercy One West Des Moines Medical Center. And he's also vice president of Mercy One in Des Moines. So happy to have you here today. Yeah, thanks again, Catherine, for having me. So, Phil, tell us about your leadership journey. You are leading one of our finest hospitals in our region. So tell us what brought you here, what brought you to West Des Moines, and we'd love to hear your story. Sure. Well, um, it's, it's an interesting uh, thing. Um, this is my second time, uh, and our family's second time, living in the Des Moines area. So um, I joined Mercy One a couple of years ago. Uh, and um, years before, I had worked with, uh, uh, with another health system uh, here in the area. So the, and the story around that is um, um, earlier in my career, I was a cancer center uh, a service line director. I served in that capacity in Indiana and then um, here with the John Stoddard Cancer Center. And during uh, my time in Iowa, I got to know Carl Keeler. Uh, and uh, Carl Keeler um, was a CEO for a hospital in Idaho. And he recruited me there. And then he was recruited uh, to take uh, Bob Ritz's role uh, here for the central Iowa region for Mercy One. And then Carl recruited me back to Des Moines. So, um, so uh, I, I've been able to, to be fortunate to, to be here in Des Moines twice. <laughs> we love that. We love that you're back. That's, that's so yeah. awesome. So um, here we are in COVID-19. Uh, fall is coming. The kids are back in school. How are how are you faring uh, at Mercy One, and and what's uh, what's the landscape look like in your uh, medical center? Yeah, yeah. This has been such an interesting year, hasn't it been for for all of us, all industries, all walks of life, professionally, personally. Um, and and what I would say is is we're in a good spot right now. You know, if you look back to where we were you know, March, April, May was when we had our high point as far as our COVID um, positive patients on both campuses, downtown and West Des Moines. And then since then, we've been able to, to see those, um, you know, the, the daily census of COVID positive patients come down. Uh, but um, boy, all of the precautions, all of the measures we're taking, uh, you mentioned the kids going back to school um, and, you know, the universities, colleges, we're, we, we can't do enough to, um, to take those precautions. But what's really nice is we're, we're back and have been for a, a few months now, back doing elective surgeries, back taking care of folks. And, and it was really hard um, for our patients, for our providers uh, to have been you know, kind of paused with that early on when the pandemic hit. And then never mind the economic impact this has had, again, to all industries, uh, to all individuals. So we're, we're grateful to be where we are now, uh, and we're hopeful that we'll continue to take those measures to keep us all you know, uh, safe and healthy and, and that, uh, you know, efforts uh, as it relates to, to vaccine development are, are successful. Yeah, well, in vaccine development, that's the future. That's what we're all hanging our hat on, right? And, and uh, yeah. so what's your crystal ball on when that future might be here? You work in this, you know, profession every day. Do you have any inside scoop on, on uh, how that vaccine uh, momentum is, is coming? Boy, I, I wish I had a crystal ball, uh, Catherine, but this one, unfortunately, as I talk with um, our, our different uh, physician leaders and others, you know, we, we, there are promising vaccine trials and um, there's a lot of funding and um, a lot of support, which is fantastic to, to hear. And anecdotally, I, I've heard of individuals who are volunteering to participate, you know, and some of these are middle-aged, some of these are grandparents. And so it's, it's fantastic to see um, uh, really this, uh, this, this effort to, to combat this virus um, uh, be so collaborative. But as far as a, a timeline or, or what are we anticipating, really it's, it's anybody's guess. Uh, you know, there are viruses or, or things that we, that, we, that we kind of deal with and live with, you know, from the you know, viruses that cause the, you know, the influenza or the common cold or, or HIV. Um, and every virus is, is unique. So there's, there's a lot more We've got to learn about um, about this particular disease and and um, and how to to best combat it. Um, but certainly, once um, we get approval uh, for some some vaccines, that's something that will be very important uh, again to our to our patients, to our staff, and communities to to make sure that's distributed and, and to try to help us um, 
uh, again, mitigate the, the risks uh, associated with this virus. Yeah, well, we, we can't wait. <laughs> can't wait <laughs> to have that deployed and have everybody uh, safe. That would, be, that would be wonderful. So tell us about Mercy One and some of your amazing innovations. I know that you have a lot of significant innovations in the healthcare field. So tell us about some of those. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, it, that's one of the interesting things about the pandemic, right, is it has helped um, accelerate and accentuate um, the innovations around telemedicine, telehealth, which aren't new, but, um, you know, there, there's nothing like a crisis like this that, uh, that causes us to really look at the tools we have and try to redeploy those in more creative, innovative ways to, to meet the needs of, of our communities. So, um, within Mercy One, we've seen this, this acceleration uh, uh, and this adoption of telemedicine play out in a variety of different ways. Um, one that's a little bit unique to our organization, we've got a, a pilot going on uh, at our downtown campus with something that we call internally uh, virtual nursing. And so, of course, our patients have their caregivers, their nurses um, there at the bedside with them. What this does is it um, supplements that. And uh, it allows through technology greater support, not only for the nursing staff, but there's benefit to the ancillary staff as well, and ultimately to the patient uh, to, uh, to make sure that there's um, you know, more streamlined communication and responsiveness to whatever the, the needs might, might arise. Um, and in addition to that, there's the more traditional uh, telemedicine. And even across the Mercy One statewide uh, network of, of hospitals and clinics that we have, we're seeing more and more uh, development and conversations regarding how we can support one another. Uh, for example, our uh, Ruan Neurology Clinic uh, here in Des Moines is uh, supporting uh, partners uh, up in uh, kind of the Siouxland area as well as Mason City uh, with some, some telemedicine services that way. So we're, we're excited about that and really fortunate to have this technology uh, to respond to, to this pandemic. Even the nature of this interview, right, we're doing via Zoom, it's great to have this technology to, to let us do this. Um, a couple of other things that we're excited about, uh, too, innovation-wise, and this one might feel like, well, that, what's innovative about it? Well, early next year, 2021, um, we'll open a behavioral health hospital. And that's significant. Uh, there's been a need and a growing need for many, many years. And while that might not be as high tech, that still is an innovative approach, and that's a, a joint venture uh, uh, that we've entered into, and, and, and we're looking forward to being able to, to provide um, better support for those individuals needing uh, those services, and that'll have both inpatient as well as outpatient uh, services. And then the last one that I'll share with you, because this was a really recent one, um, our cancer centers downtown have a technology called CyberKnife, and it's, it's not actual cutting and surgery. It uses radiation to uh, to, to pinpoint the delivery, the, the dose of, of treatment, if you will. And so we just upgraded um, our CyberKnife unit uh, uh, downtown, and it's the only one in the state. And to, to give you a practical example, if an individual has, say, prostate cancer, instead of going for, say, six weeks of conventional radiation therapy, CyberKnife can deliver all of the treatment necessary within one week. And so um, innovations come in a variety of ways. And, and um, so th those are a, a few things that we're really excited about uh, innovation-wise uh, here at Mercy One. Oh, I love that. So virtual nursing, cyber knife, behavioral health, and mental health is such a big issue. I love to hear that you're doing that, the behavioral health clinic. That's incredible. So thank you for being a pioneer in so many areas. That's, that's so significant. So tell us a little bit about your family. I understand you have quite a few kids. Is that right, Phil? <laughs> That's right, we do. So we, we moved to Iowa the first time with two children, and they were very young, you know, preschool age. And, and now those two kids, one's a freshman uh, at BYU, and one's a senior at Waukee High School. So it's incredible how fast the time has gone. Uh, we have six kids. The next two, uh, now seventh grade and fifth grade, they were both born here in Des Moines. Uh, they're, they're natives, Iowa natives. And then our uh, fifth was born uh, back in Ohio uh, when I went back to the Ohio State University to pursue my PhD. And then the baby is a spud. She was born in Idaho. So she's in second grade now. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, kids keep us, uh, keep us young, keep us on our toes. And, and we've got one in pretty much uh, any school you can, can think of, elementary, middle, high school, and now college. So um, uh, in of course, with the pandemic, there have been challenges there, but um, you know, we're just following the precautions and, and wearing the masks and hand sanitizing and, um, 
you know, there's, there's a lot of life that we can enjoy and safely enjoy. You know, you just, you just got to be smart with it. Well, I love that you said you have a child that was born in Idaho because people get Idaho and Iowa mixed up all the time. There's even a Reagan yeah. t-shirt that yeah, makes the <laughs> makes mockery of that. So that's really Absolutely. That's awesome. I'll tell you, Ohio gets in the mix too. So we've been in Ohio twice, Iowa twice, <laughs> Idaho once. At least Indiana, when we live there, people don't confuse Indiana. So. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. That's so awesome. So tell us about your favorite thing about West Des Moines. So I love to ask that question because there's so much to choose from. There is so much to choose from. And, and what I'm going to share isn't just one thing. I will just call it the Jordan Creek sort of complex area. Uh, I remember vividly when we first came to Des Moines, uh, you know, almost 15 years ago and just being blown away with, with the, the shopping, the restaurants, just how convenient and everything. And when we came back, it's even better. And so from the, you know, and we'll see how it's handled this December, but you know, the, the lighting of the, the Christmas tree that Santa does, you know, our, our family was there last year and that's a fun event to um, just, again, with six kids, we're to Costco pretty regularly. You know, there's, there's Smash Park, there's, you know, our dog's kennel is over in that part of the, the West Des Moines area. So we, we really enjoy, um, uh, you know, the, the complex that's around there and, and the growth that's there has been, um, just again, wonderful, again, from the shopping, the, the restaurants, the entertainment. And so that's, that if you had to pick one area in West Des Moines that, uh, that gets our family's attention and, and dollars, it's, it's that, that area. <laughs> well, I was just over there today at an appointment at Athene and that whole Jordan Creek Parkway has just exploded over the last year. I mean, it's amazing. It's just so, yeah, always growing, always building. So, yeah. So incredible. Well, thank you, Phil, for your insights today. This is our brand new CEO insight series that the chamber started during COVID. We love to help share the story, share the story of you and your amazing expertise in the West Des Moines area. So thank you for being a highly valued chamber member. And we appreciate your insights today, Phil. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity, Catherine. Uh, best to you and, and to all going forward. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thanks. You too.